And I'm going to touch on education and how they are attacking us with, with, with the education. Part of the Muslim Brotherhood, part of this plan is how to start infiltrate every segment of our society in order to destroy America from within and create a generation that hates America from within. They have a media department, an educational department, a political department, a writer's department, uh, Islamic education department, intellectual think tank departments on every level. I'm going to touch now on our universities and how systematically they have tried this strategy to destroy our universities. I call our universities occupied territories because if you have a child in an American college campus right now, especially if it's an Ivy League university, you know exactly why I call it occupied territories. We have lost our universities. They're brainwashing our children. So how are they brainwashing our children and why? They started, the Saudis, because of the oil wealth, started pumping millions into our universities, setting up Middle East study departments and political science departments, setting up Arab professors who are anti-Israel and anti-America to basically brainwash our students. They are using, this is how they're doing it, they are using a loophole in our laws called the Title VI program. The Title VI program was instituted by our government after World War II to educate American students about foreign languages and foreign cultures, especially those who want to get into the CIA and the State Department and diplomatic field so they can be an asset to our country. That's how the Saudis are able to use that program to funnel millions into our universities and set up this Middle East Study Department and Political Science Department. To give you a general idea of the infiltration of our universities, King Fahad of Saudi Arabia donated $20 million to set up a Middle East study department at the University of Arkansas. Five million donated to Berkeley's Middle East study department for two Saudi sheikhs linked to Al-Qaeda. Harvard received $22.5 million. Georgetown, $28.3 million. 11 million to Cornell, 5 million to MIT, 1.5 million to Texas A&M, 1 million to Princeton. Rutgers received 5 million share endowment, as did Columbia, who tried to lie to conceal the source of the funds. I can go on and on and on and on and on with many, 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 many universities. From the Ivy League to the community colleges and everything in between. We pump the gas and they pump poison into the hearts and minds of our future generation. And that's why we must become energy independence and stop our dependence on oil. It gets even worse. You know how it gets worse? The Muslims got together and they decided, you know what? The strategy worked so well on college campus. Why wait until the kids get to college? Why don't we start with the children in middle school, in sixth and seventh grade? They are so impressionable. They are young. They are ready to learn. Let's start then. So they started with the Islam course in middle schools in seventh grade as a part of the social studies program, where students have to study Islam for three weeks, memorize and recite verses from the Quran, go to a mosque on a field trip, adopt Islamic names, and fast for Ramadan if they can to experience what it's like to be a Muslim. You know, when I started talking about this a few years ago, I actually discussed it in detail in my book, They Must Be Stopped, uh, which be, will be later available here. I see a lot of you taking notes. Save yourself from taking notes, and then the book later, you can get it. Just focus on listening. <laughs> they started with the children. Now, how did Hitler change society? Hitler said, give me your children. I'll change society in 10 years. And that's exactly what the Muslims are doing in the United States. When I started speaking about this, people would say, no way, we have separation of church and state, how could this be happening? So I thought there is nothing like show and tell. So here is the course. Here is the course about Islam. Yes, Pastor. The teacher instruction continues. Dressing as a Muslim and trying to be involved will increase your learning and enjoyment. Finally, trying your best at all tasks will guarantee you an excellent grade and a more enjoyable time. The teacher is already dangling the great carrot in front of the children. Here are the Islamic names the students have to choose from. Abdullah, Khalid, Hassan, Hamza, Ibrahim, Karima, Khadija, Maryam, Noor, etc. Here are some exercises from the class. You know, it's a three-week course. 
And I'm going to read you an exercise because I'm going to make a point with this exercise. This exercise is about wisdom, wisdom cards, these are called. <coughs> They're teaching the students facts from fiction. And here is a fact card. A jihad is a struggle by Muslims against oppression, invasion, and injustice. Now, this may sound familiar to you, but here is why. Because these are the talking points of Al-Qaeda anytime Al-Qaeda issues a press release saying why they are fighting the Americans in the Middle East. Why? Al-Qaeda is fighting what? Oppression of the Islamic world, invasion of the Islamic world, injustice in the Islamic world. What do the Palestinians say when they're talking about why they're fighting Israel? Why they have jihad against Israel? What's the Palestinians' talking point? Have you ever heard Hamas, the latest Hamas press release? We will continue our fight against injustice, oppression, and invasion. Our enemies' talking points are now being taught to our 6th and 7th graders in public schools in the United States. Why are they doing this? Because these students 10 years from now are going to be in college and they're going to go into the workforce and they vote. And what, you, what opinion do you think they're going to have about Israel and our soldiers who are fighting in the Middle East coming back home? Well, of course they're going to kill you. You deserve to die because they are just protecting themselves. That's why they have jihad, because they're fighting you because you invaded them and you are not being just to them and you are occupying them. That's what's happening in our society. And here's the kicker. Here is something that the students have to analyze. Remember, public school. This is public school. Here's something that they have to, 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 to analyze. It is the Islamic salvation prayer or the Fatiha, which is the prayer that is said in the beginning of every prayer. It is the equivalent to the Christian prayer of the salvation prayer of I accept Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior, etc. Praise be to Allah, Lord of creation. Now remember, we cannot sing Christmas songs at public schools. Okay? Can you imagine Pastor Hammond going in there saying praise be to Jesus Christ in public schools? Okay. Praise be to Allah, Lord of creation, the compassionate, the merciful, King of judgment day. You alone we worship and to you alone we pray. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored, which is the Muslims who accepted Islam and Muhammad. Not of those who have incurred your wrath, which is the Jews who refused Muhammad. Nor of those who have gone astray, which is the Christians. This is in public school. The students have to analyze this prayer. Can you imagine Pastor Hammond going to, to public schools and saying, we're going to teach the Bible, a course about the Bible for three weeks. Now you all students, if you behave yourself and dress like Jesus used to dress and you know, wear the, the Roman sandals, you'll get better grades. And you're going to adopt Judeo-Christian names like Michael and Sarah. And you're going to memorize and recite verses from the Bible. And you're going to fast to experience Good Friday so you'll know what it's like to be a Christian. And then I'm going to invite you to my church for a church service so you can experience like what it's a Christian. Now let's analyze the salvation prayer. Jesus, I accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. What do I mean by that? Can you imagine him teaching that in public schools? What do you think will happen? And you know how they're getting away with it? Because most parents do not sit with their children and watch what their kids are studying. 